Welcome uh, to this presentation <coughs> on biophotons. Um, although it's all biophotons, we have called this biontology. Can we just do an introduction first? If we yes. Smanji, I'm going to do your little. <coughs> Thank you. You do your thing. Okay, okay. I'll sit down again. <laughs> Dr. Johan. Swinkle, right? <laughs> he's a biophysicist, a homeopathy. A homeopathy. Uh, uh, he's the director of the Health Angel Academy in the Netherlands. He's been doing this uh, biophoton since 1982. He's seen about 25,000 people with acute and chronic symptoms. And he's here to demonstrate this uh, wonderful system for us. Uh, we're, we're, of course, we're Santa Fe Soul Health and Healing Center. We have a lot of different modalities here. I do energetic medicine. There's a lot of people that do different things here. So thanks for coming out. I'm welcome. Thank you, Monty. Uh, <coughs> we call it biontology uh, because ontology is the study of the ultimate reality of nature. And the ultimate reality of nature is light. We are all light beings. Uh, Already the ancient Egyptians knew this. Uh, it's actually written in the Book of the Dead uh, that we are all light beings. Uh, <coughs> at that time, they were also uh, very aware that all people thought with their hearts and not with their heads. Uh, even if uh, you didn't see the light, it is there. Uh, the biophotons run all your body functions. And uh, in this light, the biophotons are information packages. They are not frequencies, they are not light waves, they are information packages. And information packages can settle on any frequency or any light wave, if they so want to. Uh, <coughs> that we do not see this light uh, is a matter of perception. You and I, you think there is a distance here, there is no distance. We only per don't perceive what's in between. Uh, animals perceive far more than we humans do. Um, <clears throat> and, but if we uh, could get in touch with our mind, we could perceive this light. Uh, because the mind has an incredible perception. As long as you don't place the mind in your head. Because it is not. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> thinking is a psychological disease. Uh, from which most of the problems come. Uh, I always say the head has limited intellect, the heart has unlimited wisdom. So always listen to your heart and uh, never to your head. Uh, because the head ignores the body. It actually stops it from healing itself. Now, there are more reasons than uh, uh, just thinking uh, that stop the healing. Uh, I will get to that later on. Uh, <clears throat> but for the moment, uh, this is a uh, uh, system. Because in their numerous studies on the spontaneous remission of cancer. And 90% of all the uh, cancer are going in remission uh, that happen when people give up. In other words, they ignore the cancer. And when their head is out of the way, the body starts taking over. Them. And the body is incredibly happy that the head is out of the way. Because then it can finally do what it has always wanted to do, but it was stopped uh, <coughs> because of uh, the thinking, actually. Uh, most cancers develop after a period of intensive stress. 
And stress only happens when there's disharmony between head and heart. That is the pure only reason for stress. If there was no disharmony, <laughs> there <laughs> you would only go with your heart because uh, the difference, I mean most people, especially women, they, they feel this between the heart and the head and they have often have difficulty deciding which way to go. I mean if you have a choice between two options <clears throat> and you do not know which one to take, do not take either of them because both are wrong. If you can't make up your mind, your head, <laughs> uh, both decisions are wrong. Because if any one of those decisions or options was right, you would know it instantly. And so if you can't make up which one to take, then don't take either of them, but uh, search for another uh, option. I always say, perceive, then feel and do something. Thinking does not play a part in it. <clears throat> uh, your own bodies, I deliberately said bodies, because our bodies are not just the physical. Uh, the physical is only, I think, 2%. That's our physical body. Oh, uh, of all the DNA that we have, only 2% of that DNA runs all physical functions on your body. Only 2%. That means that 98% of our DNA does things of which we don't have a clue about. <coughs> only 2% of the DNA runs all physical functions of the body. That means that 98% we have no idea. Uh, I think the 2% only runs in the three-dimensional universe, but we have 15 dimensions. And 98% uh, the scientists call junk DNA, <laughs> uh, but it definitely has all kind of uh, functions. Uh, <coughs> amongst one of the things is feeling and ESP, for example, uh, you can uh, uh, also uh, concentrate your, on your pituitary gland, your third eye, uh, <coughs> and the other dimensions is also our soul. <coughs> uh, we are always uh, <coughs> uh, uh, we are always taught to listen to teachers, to parents, to the government, to the church, whoever. But we have never been taught to listen to ourselves. And to listen to ourselves means listening to all your bodies, what they have to tell. Because <coughs> uh, our senses are very limited. Our five senses are incredibly limited. Uh, and what we call sixth sense, it might be seventh sense, eighth sense, ninth sense, whatever. They observe everything far <coughs> earlier uh, than uh, it manifests in the physical. Uh, in 1982, there were already uh, studies at that time at the, in uh, England, uh, <coughs> and they discovered that in measuring, you could discover cancer nine months before it manifested. But it could already be measured in the system. As everything has speeded up, I don't think it's nine months anymore, it might be three months now.